Hi everyone, my name is James. Welcome to King's Fine Woodworking. Today I'm going to show you how to build this finger joint jig. Uh, some people call it a box joint jig. It's basically the same thing. And I've got a project coming up that uses finger joints extensively. And I wanted to show you how to put this little jig together. It's a real simple one to build. Uh, probably one of the easier jigs in woodworking. And you just simply clamp it onto your crosscut sled. And that's all there is to it. It's really just made of two components. Uh, what I've used for the back is a piece of plywood, and what I've used for the pin that sticks out is just a piece of hardwood. And I'm gonna start by cutting some of these hardwood pins. This particular finger joint jig, I would like it to work with 3 8 inch finger joints, and so I'm gonna to try to cut these pins at 3 8 of an inch. I have set my table saw fins for that, and then I've just tapped it a bit bigger and tapped it a bit smaller and cut three of these things out. And we're going to use whichever one comes closest to fitting in the slot that I'm going to make. And I'll show you that in just a second. Now the reason I cut the pins first instead of later is because now I've got to change my table saw over to the dado blade. And I didn't want to have to jump back and forth so I cut a few extra pins to be safe. I'm going to use my crosscut sled that I built in a prior video and this one has removable insert plates and that way I can switch back and forth from a single blade to a dado blade and still use my same crosscut sled. So the thickness of the boards I'm going to put the finger joints in are three quarters of an inch so I need to set my blade height to three quarters of an inch above the top of my sled. And next I just grabbed a piece of scrap plywood from my lumber pile. I think this one was about 3 inches tall and about 18 or 20 inches wide. The first step is to go ahead and put a groove in this. That's the width of my dado stack, which I have set that up to be uh, 3 eighths of an inch thick. And sometimes they're exact, sometimes they're not. We'll take a look at that here. And it looks like it's coming in at about 0 0.371. That's pretty close. So I'm going to grab one of my pins, pin boards here. And I've got one here that's uh, two or three thousandths smaller uh, than the width of the slot we just cut. And I think that'll be perfect because that'll allow the pin to fit in easily with a little bit of glue. So we're going to go with that one. And we'll just glue that in place. Obviously, it's imperative that we use as much glue as we can here. Ah, shoot, it looks like the fit is a little bit too tight. I think we didn't use enough glue. Okay, it looks like we have got it to fit there. So now the next step we want to do before this glue dries is we want to make sure that it is square. Uh, it's important that this is square to the backer, to the piece of plywood there. So it's very important to clean off all of the excess glue. When we are cutting our finger joints later, the grooves need to fit perfectly over this board. Once the glue has dried, I'll just trim the back of this pin off flush with the back of the piece of plywood. If that stuck out at all, it wouldn't fit nicely against the back fence of our crosscut sled. And you probably noticed the pin is not quite as tall as the slot. That doesn't really matter. Uh, the pin just has to be there for alignment purposes. It can be a little short. Uh, now I'm going to cut the front of the pin off, maybe a couple of inches or so. The length here also really isn't critical. And then I'm going to kind of sand the top corners of the pin just a little bit round. Uh, that will allow me to slide the finger joints over it as I proceed through the cutting phase a little bit easier. They won't really get stuck on the top or I won't have to fidget with them to make them fit. And now I'll just do a little test fit with a sample board that I cut. And it looks like it fits on there nicely and it doesn't really wiggle side to side. And that's really all we need. And that's all there is to it. It takes probably 10 or 15 minutes to build a jig like this and it's ready to go. We just set it up on our crosscut sled, clamp it in place, and we're ready to start making finger joints. So you're probably wondering where I set this on the crosscut sled. And that's also pretty easy. I want a 3 8 inch wide finger joint. So I just measured and I set that pin 3 8 of an inch over from the edge of my blade. And it doesn't matter if you're perfect or not because we're going to correct it and make it perfect on the very next step. 
And so just like with a lot of woodworking jigs, we need to have a couple of sample boards first and we'll run a test cut on these and we'll check out the fit. The sample board that we are cutting doesn't necessarily have to be the same width as the final piece that we're going to cut, but it does help if it's the same thickness. That way we can tell if we have the blade raised to the correct height. And if you remember, the blade needs to be as tall as our piece is thick. So the proper technique to uh, cut the slots on the mating piece is to reverse the first piece, put that in the jig, and that gives us our correct spacing for the start of the second one. Okay, so now we're going to put these together and see how the fit is. And as it turns out, this fit is very loose. It doesn't, uh, it's hard to interpret that from the camera, uh, but it is actually too loose, too loose of a fit. So we're going to take some measurements and see what happened. So the first thing I'm going to measure is the, the dado groove here, the path that the blade cut, and that's 0.375. That was the width of the dado blade. Then I'm going to measure the thickness of one of the fingers. The fingers are the spaces between the blades. That's 0.356. So that's quite a bit smaller. Let's put that down on paper, and I'll show you how we deal with that. So I have drawn an expanded model of my finger joint here, and I'm going to make some marks in here and write down what these things are. So the gap where the blade passed through is 0.375 inches. That's where the blade path was. And the finger is 0.356. The fingers are all the same, and the fingers are the spaces between the cuts the blade makes. I'm going to write this out slowly in detail here for everybody to read. We want the finger size to be smaller by 6 one thousandths. That's 0 0.006. What we have is we have a blade size that's 0.375. And we have a finger size that is 0.356. If we do the math, we see that's 0 0.019. So it's not six thousandths, it's 19 thousandths smaller. So it's way too small. So we're going to have to make a correction. We wanted it six thousandths smaller, but it's 19 thousandths smaller. And so that we're clear, this is the finger part on the uh, piece of wood that we just cut. And that goes there between the blade and the pin. And that needs to be bigger. Right now it's too small. It needs to be six one thousandths smaller than the 0.375 blade width. Now we are going to do the math to see how much too small it is. The difference between 19 thousandths and six thousandths is 13 thousandths. So we have to move the pin by 13 thousandths. And remember, this is the pin. If we move it away from the blade by 13 thousandths, it will make our finger wider by 13 thousandths. We can see how it fits there. And we have to remember, we have to move it away from the blade. I want to take just a second to reiterate in case you come up with something bigger or smaller. Remember, your finger joint should be five to six thousandths smaller than the blade. If the finger is too small, you move the pin away from the blade. If the finger is too big, you must move the pin toward the blade. And I'm going to leave this here for just a second and let you get a screenshot of it. And this should help you do any math or calculations that you need to quickly uh, set up your finger joint jig in the future.
Okay, now we will go ahead and move it. And moving it is also really quite easy. You will need to get a feeler gauge. And remember, we had to move it by 13 thousandths. So I'm going to pull out the one that's exactly 13 thousandths to use that. So the procedure to move the board here uh, to the right by 13 thousandths is to put the spacer and clamp a small board in place so that just the point of the board touches the spacer. We'll clamp that board in good and tight and then we will pull our spacer out of the way. Now the gap that is left in there is 13 thousandths. So if I unclamp the finger joint jig, I'll be able to scoot it over by exactly 13 thousandths. So what I'm doing next here is I'm going to go ahead and try to cut a little sample box. This is a little trick that I learned from watching William Ng's video. I'm going to put a link to his video in the description. Uh, he is an awesome woodworker. He has a fantastic YouTube channel and he is great at putting these things together. So at any rate, that little mark is the mark that I'm always going to point toward the pin. It's going to stay on the pin side and I'm going to go ahead and proceed through the cut here and you'll see how that works. Now it's time to proceed over to the second board and you noticed I flipped the first board around and I'm putting the two marks both towards the pin. And this, uh, the cherry board spacer here is what's giving me the correct space for the first cut in the walnut board. And all that was achieved by making uh, sure that those marks were pointing towards the pin. And now we'll go ahead and cut the walnut board all the way through. Okay, now it is time for a test fit. Let's see if that worked out. And that looks like a great fit. It is good and snug, and there's still enough room in there for me to get a good layer of glue. So let's cut the rest of the box so we can see what it looks like. And I want to show you something. When I finish the cut on one side, I flip it upside down to cut the other side, and I make sure that my pencil mark is still facing the pin. This is actually a very easy woodworking jig to build. As long as you have a crosscut sled, you can build a different um, finger joint jig for every different size finger joint that you want, and it only takes a minute to set each one up whenever you're ready. We spent probably less than an hour shooting the whole thing, filming it, and all that. And you can see when your jig is set up right, everything comes out nice and flush. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.